Okay, now we're going to knit row 10. And because we're knitting back and forth, we knit row 9 from right to left, starting where the 9 is. We did that on all of the odd rows. And then row 10, we're going to start on this side and go this way. Um, this is a symmetrical pattern and it's not gonna make uh, very much difference in this part, but sometimes it does make a difference if you read the chart the wrong direction. So you wanna start each row where the number is because you've turned your knitting and you're going back in the other direction. Okay, so row 10, remember I have my three extra stitches on my edge of my swat, so I'm just gonna knit those, and now I'll start the repeat of the pattern. So it's got knit one, knit front and back, and we do that three times. And each of those knit front and backs is going to be worked into a yarn over, so we know we're doing it in the right place. So just pull up one stitch. I went in normally to knit, pull up one stitch, then I go into the back of that yarn over, pull up another stitch, so I made two. And if you work with the yarn in your right hand, that's fine. Just make your knits into the front and back of that yarn over in your normal way, okay? And then here's my third knit in the front and back. All right, now if you look at this chart, we have all those nine elongated stitches plus the two decreases before and after them that all get worked into this middle section where we're gonna purl 11 together and we're gonna drop all those extra loops. So that can be a pain in the neck, or a slow thing anyway. So I'm going to put my yarn down and I have to first get all those 11 stitches and get rid of those extra loops. So I have to arrange them. So I'm gonna pull them all, just slip them purl-wise onto the right needle and notice that when I grab those double wrap ones, I'm only grabbing one and when I pull it off, it turns into a long stitch. So I'm gonna do that all the way across and then that 11th one is just the decrease stitch so it's not elongated. Now I have all those 11 stitches and I can see them really clearly. So I can bunch them together and insert my left needle through the back of them and I can wrap my yarn and purl them. But I want to show you a, another way if you have trouble with that because that can be a little tricky wrapping the yarn, getting it on the tip of the needle that has no hook and pulling it through. If you get stuck it means that you probably grabbed one of those other loops and it will possibly result in a dropped stitch. So if you have trouble just purling those together you can do it with a crochet hook. So once you get them all stretched out, got rid of the extra loops, you can take a crochet hook, and it can be a pretty small one because you want it to fit easily through all those stitches, and you slide it through all of those stitches. Now I've got them all on there. I can take them off the left needle. I can take my yarn from my right needle and grab it with my crochet hook. Come on, grab that yarn and pull it through all those loops. To me, this is trickier than the knitting. See there, I caught it on something. No, it just didn't get through the last loop. See, I still have two more loops to pull it through. There we go. Okay, so I did it with a crochet hook. To me, that's trickier than with the knitting, but for some people it's easier to use than the knitting needle. I'm gonna take it out and look, don't panic. Most of those loops were pretty big and they don't go anywhere. So I can easily grab them back up. I can easily grab them back up and remember, I'm working between the two yarn overs and I'm gonna purl them together. So don't worry, in my whole shawl, I only had to undo two of them out of the whole shawl because I thought I had missed a stitch and dropped a stitch or something. I do these very slowly though. I don't try to rush on this row, okay? So what I do is just get them kind of close to the tips, wrap my purl, 
and pull it through. And that's what it looks like if you are doing it purling. And then finish the row, knit front and back, knit one, three times. And again, if you hold the yarn in your right hand, that's fine. Just knit into the front and back of those yarn overs, the last stitch of the repeat, and my edge. And you can see I've made that gathered stitch. The next row is just some more basic plain knitting with the yarn over and a double decrease in the center. And then the final row has a couple more decreases and you knit those yarn overs in the back loop so they don't make the big holes in this case and no increases in that spot because we want to start and end with the same number of stitches. So even though this chart has 23 columns, that's how many stitches you have here when you have the most stitches. To start and end the pattern, we have 17 and you'll see in the pattern that we're working with a multiple of 17 stitches for the repeat where the lace is placed. Mm -hmm.